Hi everyone, Rob from Multihog here. And today I'm going to be taking you through a full walk around of our new MX-130 that's right behind me. So the machine itself is our most powerful machine and is an absolute workhorse of a multi-purpose tractor. It's fully hydrostatic four wheel drive. So you have a wheel motor on each wheel and um, making it very good for heavy duty winter maintenance. Um, but also it's ideal for non-winter applications like mowing, high pressure washing, or even chemical free weed control. The machine has a class leading GVW uh, of seven ton, which is unbeatable. And it has 130 horsepower Deutz engine. That's stage five diesel engine or tier four final for the US, stage five in Europe. And that is the latest in emission technology for this type of vehicle. Inside the cab, the noise and vibration levels are very, very low. It is a really comfortable place for the operator to be. And the cab also comes in two variants. Behind me, we have our MX, which is 1530 to 1700 millimeters or 60 to 67 inches. And then we have the MXC, which can be as narrow as 1.3 meters or 1300 millimeters to 1700 millimeters, 51 to 67 inches. And that range is all dependent on tire sizes. Um, some customers will go for the MXC where they want to get the machine narrow enough to fit on footpaths or sidewalks or even greenways and still have that advantage of the seven ton GVW that the MX range has. It has a top speed of 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour and it's fully EU type approved. So goes through all the safety standards required for EU type approval as a tractor. All right, let's take a look now at the very front of the machine. So up front, we have our multi-hog quick adapter hitch. It's very heavy duty with two ton or 4,000 pound lift capacity. And it's designed for really heavy attachments on the front, such as a boom arm where you had to have a lot of leverage out to the side of the machine. This is designed to have capability for that without any issues. On the hitch, you've got lift and tilt control, and that's all from a mini joystick inside the cab, which is fully proportional. And you also have float on the hitch. So really good for mowing applications or even with plows and snow blowers as well. Okay. Um, over on this side, then we have our load sensing PTO couplings. They go right up to 120 liters per minute or 32 GPM. And they have a peak pressure of 350 bar. That means you have loads of power for snow blowing and all fully hydraulic with quick release couplings over on this side. Then we have our double acting functions on this side. We can have up to four sets of double acting and they're controlled with our fingertip controls in the cab. All four of those functions can have float and they're all fully proportional. So you have really precise control over the attachment. Now taking a closer look at the cab, first thing to say is it is really spacious inside. You have loads of leg room and loads of head room for any size of operator. And when you're in there, you have superb visibility. You can see full 360 degrees around and you can see the extremities of any attachment you might have, or you'll be able to see pedestrians or ground crew walking around the machine. So it's very, very safe. We have excellent lighting packages on the machine. We have our standard headlights, fully road legal. Uh, we have options for LED work lights on the machine, which are really bright. And we can also put on extra LED flashers. On the roof, you'll see our standard beacon. We can add on an additional beacon as well. The cab is fully ROPS tested to our EU type approval. And to note on that, that means the machine can be fully road registrable um, for road use, um, and you can drive the machine uh, without a CDL license in the US, which is very important. Looking at the mirrors, we've our standard heated mirrors, and you can go for an electrical a controlled mirror as well, or electrically adjustable mirror. On the doors, we have options for sliding windows, which are great for those summer months for non-winter operation. And we even have option for heated windscreen for winter applications in those colder climates. 
access on the machine is brilliant. You have full access from the left and the right side of the machine, and it's really, really easy to step in and out of. Now onto the side of the machine, and first taking a close look at the articulation. Multihog spends a lot of engineering time on developing the articulation to make sure that it's strong enough to handle the abuse and the heavy duty attachments that would be on this machine. So you'll notice that by the thickness of plate used in the joint. It has 45 degrees articulation and the front and rear of the chassis can also oscillate plus minus five degrees, which makes it really stable for uneven or off-road terrain. On the new MX130, there's a big reduction of hydraulic hoses and cables running through the center of the machine and they're really tidily packed. So we're mitigating any risk in chafing and wear on those hoses. Looking then at the cooler. So the new MX130 has dual coolers, one here and one on the other side. Um, and behind those coolers, you have hydraulically driven fans and they are temperature controlled, so they're only running when they need to, to keep the machine cool. That makes them really, really quiet. So we've also reduced the noise level with the MX-130. And it's been approved for use in really hot climates. So for heavy duty use, even in those hot summer months, the machine is built to handle that. For grass cutting applications or for dusty applications, we also have the option to have reversing fans, which you can switch into an auto mode so when you're running the attachments, they will reverse without having to touch any buttons. Now, to talk about the mounting of rear attachments on the back of the machine. First of all, this machine has excellent carrying capacity, which is second to none. And on the back, we have a payload of up to two and a half tons or 5,500 pounds. To put that into perspective, we could have a 1,800 liter water tank, 475 pounds, which would have high pressure pumps and all the accessories to go along with that. And um, that is no problem for this machine. And that is class leading carrying capacity. The rear rail mounting system is so easy to take attachments on and off where Attachments will stand on their own support legs and you can actually reverse the machine right up to the attachment uh, and no fabrication is needed or required for mounting those attachments. It's a very simple quick connect system. You'll notice then we have hydraulic couplings on the front. So on this side, we have a set of double acting couplings that could be used for a suction container where you need tipping. Um, and then on the other side, we have our load sensing PTO couplings. Uh, they're all quick release. On the load sensing couplings, we have on the rear up to 120 liters per minute or 32 uh, gallons, just like the front. And we have that same peak pressure of 350 bar. Okay. That means we've loads of hydraulic flow for any of the rear mounted attachments. Next up, I want to show you just how much we've improved the serviceability and maintenance access on the MX. So as you can see, we now have far better access on our new MX-130 full top and side access to the engine bay. Looking at the front here, um, once you remove the front panel, really easy to clean off the coolers. Direct access for filling up the AdBlue, which is part of the stage five tier four final emissions. And then easy access to all the main engine service components. Fuel filters, we can pull this panel out of the way. without the use of any tool. So very straightforward to get access to your oil filter. Uh, and even without removing that panel, you have access to your dipstick and you've got your fuel tank and everything on this side as well. So it's greatly uh, improved the access, making things a lot easier for maintenance personnel to do any maintenance or service on the machine. So 
Also to note, the 130 horsepower engine, the drive pump and the PTO pump are all housed in the rear chassis. That really helps to reduce the overall levels of noise and vibration inside the cab. And a very important point is that this machine has a 500 hour service interval. That really helps to reduce the overall usage of parts, reduces cost and reduces downtime, making it a more sustainable choice. Now looking at the rear of the machine, first to point out a couple of new things about the MX130 at the back. Uh, first, you'll notice uh, these new rear rails. So you would use them for attaching a drop spreader, for example, and it's very simple. It would just bolt onto the rear rails and hang from the back chassis. Nice new feature to have on the machine. Also, you'll notice that the hydraulic couplings are no longer at the very back. They have moved to the front of the rear chassis, which we pointed out earlier on. That makes it a lot easier for taking on the attachments and accessing those quick release couplings. Okay, looking then at the lighting on the machine, we've full LED lighting, uh, brake lights, turn signals or indicators, uh, and also reverse light. We have option for LED flasher. You'll see we have a registration plate light here, and we have our rear view camera option on this machine. That's great for visibility when you're going to have a rear mounted attachment on the back. Down here, you'll see a blank receiver plate to take a number of different tow hitches. This machine actually has capacity for a three and a half ton brake trailer. So you could tow behind quite a large water tank behind the machine or a trailer, even with another attachment to take it out to the job site, which is an excellent option to have. Um, you'll see we have a 12 volt power supply as well for having a trailer on the back too. Uh, the whole rear grille here will actually pop out without the use of any tools to give even more access to the rear of the machine. Now around to the right side of the machine. First up you have your hydraulic oil tank. You have your sight gauge for looking at your level. Up here you have your air intake which is easy to get to just by opening up the panel. Um, here you can take that off to clean out the filter and of course you're able to clean your radiator on the right hand side of the machine. Forward from that you have two easily accessible jump points for the battery and the isolator switch for shutting off all the electronics on the machine. All right, we're inside the cab now, and the first thing you'll notice when you're sitting inside is just how spacious it is. You have really good leg room out front. You've got loads of headroom, and also the visibility is excellent. So you've got full 360 degree visibility um, around the whole cab. The seat is very comfortable. It's full air ride seat, and you can adjust how much air is in the seat uh, with a simple toggle between your legs. Um, you've got forward and back adjustments, on the seat and you can also adjust the angle of the seat behind you and you have two armrests on the seat also. You've got adjustability on the angle of the steering column which you can get really well set up and very comfortable inside the cab with all that adjustment um, and with all the padding and insulation that's what makes this cab so quiet inside. Now up above your head you'll notice your AC and heating unit. So that's a combination unit. There's great airflow in that for keeping the operator cold in those uh, summer months. And then you can turn on the heat to really get the heat pumping inside the cab when you're operating in those harsh winter climates. Um, over here then, on the right side, you have your radio. So your full uh, sound system over here. Uh, you have your rear view camera with a color display over uh, below that. And that display is always on. And so if you have a rear mounted attachment like a salt spreader on the back, you'll still be able to see what's behind you. The next unit here, that's specifically for a de-icing sprayer option. So that wouldn't always be in the cab. And then down you have your main dash right here. And that has all the information, fuel, engine RPM, speed, anything like that that the operator would need. Okay, taking a closer look at the display. Going from left to right, first thing you have here is your AdBlue level gauge. Then you have your fuel level and then your engine RPM. 
In the middle of the screen, you have information for the operator, like your PTO flow front and rear, and also your load assist percentage here. You have your travel time and also working hours display. Um, and then moving over to the right, you have your um, park brake indicator and your gauge for your travel speed. You've got a battery level indicator and engine temperature over here on the very right as well. A new feature we have in the MX is the customizable modes for different attachments. So you can go in to your general settings uh, and in here you'll see at the moment the machine is set up as more. We have a plow option. We also have a standard option that you can configure. Um, actually in total there's six different configurable modes that you can pre-program for different attachments. That means that if you switch from a plow to a mower deck you just have to switch the mode and straight away the machine already has the correct preset values for hydraulic flow and um, your fingertip controls are all set up at the right level so that makes it really really easy to use so also from the main display we've now put in onboard diagnostics um, and this is the same across our whole range and is a huge improvement for reducing downtime so Going into the menu, if you go to the diagnostics page, you'll see you've got four pages available for diagnostics. Our engine, drive pump, main controller input, so that's all the electrical inputs into the controllers on the machine. And then we've got our main controller and PDM output, so that's all the outputs going to all the hydraulic valves um, and all the other components as well. To give you an example, going to the outputs page, at the top, you'll see an image um, showing the main hydraulic valve block. This is a really nice feature. So I can get live information on the display. If I move my joystick, for example, you will see that the valve that should be active is highlighted. If I move the joystick the other way, you can see um, the same valve, but in the other direction is now highlighted. So if there is an issue with anything, it's very easy to check um, which valve should be working. And also when I move that, it'll actually show you on the display the current going to the solenoid in that valve. So you can see if it's getting the right amount of current. Um, if it wasn't uh, getting the right amount, it could be a problem with the connection. If it is, maybe it's a problem with the actual valve itself. But all that information makes it a lot quicker to debug and reduce the downtime of the machine. Okay, now taking a look at the control console. The first thing to mention is that the whole console is connected directly to the air right seat. So it moves up and down with the seat. So your arm is staying steady. It's all fingertip controls here. First one you have is your mini joystick, which controls your front hitch, the lift and tilt. And you have forward, back, left and right control in that. Then you have the finger paddles. So this is a whole new control system compared with the last MX, but it's so easy to use where each paddle controls a function and all of these controls are fully proportional and they have float where you simply just push them down to lock them into float. It makes even the larger, heavier attachments like a boom arm so simple to use where you can have really fine, precise control over the attachment. Going forward then, here you have your safety switches for your front and rear PTO, and you have your park brake control. Here you have adjustment for forward, neutral, and reverse on your rocker switch. Then you have a single toggle for going from drive mode to work mode, which is clearly labeled here on the console. And if you have the cruise speed button, uh, that will be here if you have that option. When you're in work mode, you can control your engine RPM independent of your drive speed um, by adjusting the orange toggle. And when you're in drive mode, your engine RPM and your drive pump is controlled simultaneously um, by the ECU. And that is to optimize your fuel consumption. So you're only using as much engine power and engine RPM as needed to propel the vehicle. So that helps to reduce your overall fuel consumption, making the machine more sustainable. You then have a keypad here on the right side of the console. You have first and second speed. Speed two will allow you that 40 kilometers an hour travel speed. 
Um, but for working and operating attachments or off-road where you might need more torque, you can jump down into speed one. You can enable your load assist here. Um, you have a high pressure carryover option there also, the next one down. Then you have control for your differential. So you would need that for that heavy duty winter maintenance. And on the MX, you actually have a two stage differential. Stage one to give you like a 50% lock. And then you have a full hydraulic lock when you engage stage two, giving you super traction on the machine. As I said earlier on, you have the option for a reversing fan where you can, can, can control that off the keypad, but it is also possible to set that up into an automatic mode. And then you have your heated windscreen um, and heated mirror. If you have the option for the heated windscreens, it's controlled off the same button there. You have your flashers and beacons and then control for your LED work lights. So all of that is on the control console. Um, the operator never has to reach for everything. You can always have your hand on the controls and have your hand on the steering wheel at the same time. Um, so it's very safe and user friendly. Um, talking about the drive, we've actually simplified the drive in the machine with a push to go drive system now on the new MX. And that is so easy to use, very intuitive um, and also very responsive. So you have a single pedal accelerator and then you have a brake pedal in case of emergencies.